forged secretly in mortuary archaeology's hottest furnace. It's Archaeodeath. Hello, I'm out in another local cemetery, uh, enjoying a nice morning cycle during the lockdown to report to you on another of my recent publications, a book uh, published by Oxford University Press called Cremation and the Archaeology of Death. Now, this book um, was a collaborative editorial um, adventure involving Jessica Soretta Raman, who is now at the University of Oklahoma, and uh, Anna Vessman, who is at the University of Helsinki. And together we edited a book that contains 14 chapters exploring different dimensions of the archaeology of cremation practices in the human past. Now, it must be said that this uh, stemmed from a um, EAA conference, uh, a European Archaeology Association a conference session that we organised. And, and uh, in, in addition to that, um, it, uh, contain, it was at Helsinki that we had that EAA session. In addition to that, we commissioned additional papers to fill in gaps and expand the horizons of the collection. So, in addition to an introduction by myself as lead author with Jessica and Anna, um, there are subsequently 13 further studies that explore different times and places, different uh, contexts in which cremation occurs, and different kinds of society in which cremation is deployed. The burning of the dead is a ritual process involving the transformation of bodies into bones, fragments, and their tr translation, their separation, their, their, their containment, and their burial or scattering. So we looked at those different ways in which archaeologists tackle the, 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 the archaeology of cremation. Now the reason for putting together this volume is that the, the archaeology of cremation is a neglected subject. It did so happen that this stemmed from a, and it was inspired by an earlier edited collection, which was put together by uh, Ian Kite, Colin Quinn, and um, Gabriel Cooney, and it coincided with the publication of another uh, um, useful and valuable and far-ranging edited collection by Tim Thompson. So now there are on the market three books from 2014, 2015, and 2017 on the archaeology of cremation. But having said that, they all do very different things and cover different territory. And so I think the three books complement each other very well indeed. For our book, we not only had the introduction which set the theoretical uh, grounding for looking at cremation in the distant past and cremation in the recent past, uh, uh, as well as exploring some key themes and developing um, directions in the scientific study of cremation and the interdisciplinary um, connections of the archaeology of cremation. Um, we looked at frames of analysis, looking at relational fiery technologies, transforming and commemorating through cremation, and we also um, sort of tried to introduce the book and um, the space and times in which cremating societies um, vary and in their deployment of crem cremation. We then have um, a whole series of chapters uh, separated into three sections that take this argument forward. Part one has five, um, five chapters looking at relational fiery technologies with Amy Gray Jones looking at the European Mesolithic, Katerina Rebe Salisbury looking at the Iron Age, uh, the early Iron Age of Central Europe, Ruth Nugent looking at early Anglo-Saxon England, Lynn Goldstein looking at the Aztalan uh, site in Wisconsin and Doug Ubelaker um, looking at modern forensic case studies. So five chapters that explore um, different aspects of fiery technologies. We then have a second section called Transforming and Commemorating with Cremation. We have Gabriel Cooney looking at pathways for the dead in the middle to late Bronze Age in Ireland and Anna Roos looking at uh, the late Bronze Age in Sweden and the building with stone and bone. She looks at the handling of cremated remains within cemetery contexts. Jessica Soretta Roman does, uh, does a chapter then with her Belgian colle colleagues Cohen de Force, uh, um, Denis Honreté and Wim de Vetner, um, looking at uh, Gallo-Roman funerary practices and their variability. And then uh, Anna Vestman and myself uh, pull together a chapter looking at early medieval or late Iron Age 
um, cremation practices, comparing early Anglo-Saxon England with the situation in mid to late first millennium AD Finland. The third section is on space and time in cremating societies and we have four chapters. Jarko Saipio um, looks at the Eastern Fennoscandian um, earliest cremations going back um, from the, the sort of um, looking at Bronze Age societies, Neolithic and Bronze Age societies and their, their emergence of cremation in various different contexts and fire rituals within them. Um, Lisa Harvig looks at later a Bronze Age to Iron Age transitions in cremation in southern Scandinavia, mainly looking at Denmark. And Kirsty Squires looks at the seasonal climatic dimensions of cremation, the weather implications of cremation rites, and applies that approach to early Anglo-Saxon England. Now finally, there's another chapter by me and Anna Vestman where we look at contemporary urban cremation, how cremation is a part of contemporary societies and um, particular urban cemeteries. And we use the, the example of, of from, from Finland as a case study to look at how cremation is integrated into um, the contemporary um, cemetery environment. So in this little review, what I've, I've tried to do is introduce you to a hardback book available through from Oxford University Press that um, trying to sort of set a groundwork for something I've been doing for over 20 years and many of the other authors have been doing in this book have been doing for far longer of building this important interdisciplinary um, research area, the archaeology of cremation. And in doing so, I, I feel we've, we've um, set a new, we've, we've rectified an imbalance in the research in the archaeology of death, put cremation on the map, so to speak, so often neglected in research and theoretical discussions, so often ignored even in, in site reports. It gets very little attention compared with inhumation graves. And one of the key things I want you to take away from this is that in every society that uses cremation, they're also disposing the dead in other fashions. They have other options available to them. And therefore cremation archeologies are always relational. We're looking at the relationship between death and different disposal methods and different ways of remembering and transforming the dead. And in that regard, uh, with a set modern cemetery behind us, which contains the, um, the unburned and burnt dead who are interred here, um, I think this is a, a, a story that links the distant past with the very recent past, with our experience of death and um, memorialization, and it links key concerns of an archaeological, archaeological perspective on those past societies and recent societies to our concerns for the future and how we're going to deal with the dead through the 21st century and beyond. So I hope this little video was useful to you. Um, I've um, written many uh, academic articles about the archaeology of cremation uh, from uh, thematic and uh, period specific studies and are looking at particularly the early Middle Ages, the Anglo-Saxon and Viking Age and also the contemporary past, looking at the 19th, 20th and 21st centuries, um, the, the recent past. In addition to that, you can look at my Archaeo Death blog where I have lots of posts about cremation practices, past and present. Thank you. If you've enjoyed this Archaeo Death video, why not check out the Archaeo Death blog at howardwilliamsblog.wordpress.com?